Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here at Table One. Thanks so much for tuning in. We're going to be playing with Mewtwo V-Star once again. I do feel like the card has potential. Um, the one KOs are real and um, it's just a pretty good card. Overall, we did just play it play with it recently. I wanted to showcase more of it. Um, I made a couple of changes to the list that I had used. Um, but in case you missed the previous video, Psy Purge does 90 damage for each Psychic Energy you choose to discard up to 3, so 270 damage total. And you have the Star Raid V Star Power, which does 120 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon V in play, which can soften some of them up. Or in case you missed a KO on one of them, you can finish them off with the Star Raid. Now we're gonna get energies into play with Shan Rider, Caloric 3 Max's ability on the world door, which allows you to attach a psychic energy card from your hand to one of your benched psychic Pokemon. And if you do, um, you draw two cards. So you get consistency and energy acceleration all in one. And you also have the late game max guys to attack, doing 10 damage plus 30 more damage for the psychic energy attached <clears throat> to all of your Pokemon. So this attack can also get um, pretty wild pretty quickly and can do a lot of damage in the late game and you can alternate attackers between Mewtwo and Shadow Rider Calyrex. Now for support we do have Crobat and Luminion to help draw more cards and find supporters and we also have Galarian Articuno's ability Cruel Charge so that you can from your hand bench it, attach to Psychic Energies and power up both um, of your other attacks of the V-Stars but you can also use Psy Laser to snipe for 120 damage on any Pokemon that you want from your opponent, and you, but you do have to discard all the Psychic Energies attached to um, Articuno. Now, finally, we have the addition of Pumpkaboo as another way to counter Path to a Peak um, outside of the two stadiums that we play, because that um, stadium definitely shuts off basically our whole deck, our whole engine, so we want to have extra ways to deal with it, and we have... Um, four fog crystal, three quick will and tool troll to be able to search for a Pumpkaboo along with all the other Pokemon that we do have. We have energy recovery with two energy retrieval and the two training court um, that we do play along with 12 basic psychic energy, so a very healthy amount. And then we have four research, three Marnie and three bosses orders. Um, choice belt helps bolster up the damage, gets us past the 270 damage threshold for Mewtwo and Herbaloon <coughs> along with switch help us in um, Retreating to make sure we're attacking with the right Pokemon because Calyrex can only power a Pokemon on the bench. So let's jump to the ladder and play some games. And here's a quick um, message from our sponsors. If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. Looking for PTGO codes? Photon Store has all the latest sets and promos, instantly delivered to your email. You can use Tailman code when checking out for 5% off. Card Market is Europe's largest online marketplace for Pokemon cards. Whether you're looking for sealed product or singles, vintage or the latest sets, just follow the link in the description to find what you need. This video is sponsored by the Pokemon TCG deck building website PokemonCard.io. All right, so we got to go first. Pretty cool. We'll see what we are up against. I've been okay, choosing to bench a lot of things. So it's just good old Lunatone Salt Rock. All right. Um, we do have Luminion to grab a supporter for next turn. So we can definitely establish another Calyrex right here. Um, as long as I can shuffle around my attackers, apply enough pressure. I should be good. I could try to use Astral Barrage at some point um, to try to establish two KOs, but that will only be relevant um, if I ever... Um, hmm, who gets the first attachment? I think Mewtwo is a, an easier guarantee of a KO next turn. Um, so I can only use Astral Barrage realistically until I've seen all four scoop up nets are gone from my opponent. And not taking away energies from an active Lunatone will also be pretty bad. But speaking of, <laughs> we see an immediate discard of two scoop up nets. Uh, that's the third one. So, okay. So I just want to keep Astral Barrage in mind just in case. And then if my opponent waits an attack here um, to soften up my Calyrex, that would be pretty good as well. I was taking the first prize card. 
without them even getting an attack off. Um, they only have one energy in their discard pile so far. I don't know what that was. <laughs> um, we might see a cycle draw here. Yeah, we're just gonna see a cycle draw. Okay, sounds good to me. So hopefully we get the first attack going. And basically it's just apply a lot of pressure and try to shuffle your attackers. That's pretty much it. That's what we're playing towards. Um, okay, I do top deck a quick ball, which I certainly want to play and just establish another Calyrex. The more Calyrex I, I can possibly shuffle around, the better. Um, even though they are worth three prizes. <clears throat> and then we'll go ahead and bench, we'll go ahead and Herbaloon, and then I'm fairly sure with that hand size, a Marnie is pretty good. And then I'm going to try and knock out their stadium as well. Um, okay. So not the best hand, but not horrible either. So what I'm thinking here is ultra balling away research and quick ball for Shadow Rider, Incense for Mewtwo. No, never mind. That doesn't work. <laughs> um, I should go Ultra Ball away. No, okay. This one I'm gonna do. I'm gonna Quick Ball away. The Quick Ball for a Mewtwo. And then I'm gonna Ultra Ball away the Mewtwo and the Research for um, Crobat. And I will also do this to grab myself Mewtwo. Because all I need is an energy, which somehow I fail to get off of the Marnie, but that's all right. And then I can't use Pokestop as um, draw because it would just discard the energies that I would um, end up getting. But there we go. Alrighty, so we're gonna evolve right here. I would love to draw another Calyrex and or more stuff in general, so that's why I'm gonna thin with the Fog Crystals. Nope, you're not an energy. I'm gonna thin first with the Fog Crystals, and I'm gonna go ahead and Underworld Door to this Calyrex. See what I get. Okay, just more energies, all right. And then I'll go ahead and counter the Stadium to make sure that they can't attack. And then with Cyperch, so what I'm thinking is, hopefully I tank a hit with the active, and then I retreat, and then just don't use the active, right? That's sort of the plan, trying to play around with the different friends that we do have right now. All right, no stadium either for my opponent, so they would need a raw draw uh, supporter to like really get going. And they only have one energy in the discard pile as well, so that's also pretty beneficial. So even though that deck's pretty good, um, it can start to crumble apart a little bit in some circumstances. Um, one boss's orders down is also very good. Um, purely because that's after, if my plan is to tank hit, then it's really good that I can just um, or they have less costing options, right? Usually they'll be playing at least two, but probably three, right? Probably three. All right. <clears throat> so we're gonna see the first attack right here for 150, so definitely need to find another Shadow Rider Calyrex so I can retreat and attack with that dude. And that's the last scoop up net now. Um, however, like I just don't see how, because if I use Astral or Ash, knockout, actually, that's not, no, knocking out two Lunatones is not that impressive, honestly. Because I would probably just get Return KO'd, right? 
I mean, they don't have any energies right now, so maybe if I'm gonna do it, maybe the time is now. Nah, probably not though. No, I don't think it's a good idea. All right, I'm gonna use Fog Crystal, grab an energy, because I do have Training Court and um, uh, Energy Retrievals, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and you know what? I already have my... No, I don't have another herbal balloon now. Never mind. Just gonna research here. Alright, I need another Calyrex, please. <laughs> what is that draw? What the heck? What? I whiffed the Calyrex. Come on. What even is that? <laughs> I drew all the bad cards <laughs> to the point where i couldn't tank the hit that's awful that is just awful saving my opponent the process orders there could end up being um game ending <laughs> what the heck like i didn't draw balance hand at all like at all <laughs> okay well So now the issues are the crowbats and the crowbat and the Luminion. So depending on the boss's orders count, my opponent could just go after them. And possibly one-shot them. Although can they one-shot now? I guess they can with an attachment for turn triple abilities and a choice build. So I guess they can. They chose to attach energy to the active, which is really strange, honestly. Oh no, never mind. If they didn't, then they would be 10 short. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Never mind. And there's the moon kinesis. Okay. Not the best situation to be in, that's for sure. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna get overwhelmed here. <laughs> Next card, of course. That's how this works, right? Um, so does Nightwing ever matter? I mean, it's all about forcing the boss's orders, right? So, and trying to Marty again, I guess. Trying to counter Stadium that would be good. Yeah. Well, I guess I can just pump a little. No, that opens up an even easier way to take me down. And if Pokestop is in play, they could end up using it at some point and then discarding another boss, which is hopefully what, like that's sort of what we want. All right, so here goes nothing. I actually want you to draw cards with Pokestop, please. So now they're doing 150 damage, right, each turn. They haven't played down any choice builds though. So it all comes down to their boss's orders, basically. Okay. I mean, that's possibly good. Why would you bench before you draw though? Like, that's another mistake. There's no reason to bench that before you finish drawing cards. But each their own all right we want to showcase this deck against um b stars but the latter is plagued with lunatic decks wait what um Okay, they already attached and retreated. So their maximum damage output is 180. So I can promote this Calyrex and be safe, right? Like this can't be knocked out, they'll do 180 and then I just go back into my Calyrex. Now 
that's four that's 150 choice belt is 180 there's another energy in the discard pile one two three four he chose not to grab a lunatone either okay so apparently they have two prized eight cards left okay never mind they only had one price seven cards left in the deck four eight energy in play total and there's a 180 that's okay i can choose not to evolve this cadrex <laughs> as soon as i say that i draw the next one all right um bam, bam. Okay, so now I just do this, right? I know they have the two Lunatones in their hand, and they are down four Quick Balls. I do have one Marnie left. Is that worth pursuing, though? I don't think so. I honestly don't think so. I'm just going to take the KO. <clears throat> boss useless pretty much okay so they've exhausted one boss and one escape rope four cards left too oh they have palpan yikes that is a big okay boss and bruno all right so I'm not gonna win by deck out, that's for sure. They did discard and energy. So now they're down nine. And they will need to attach one to retreat. Okay, so that's 10 total energies already gotten. So how many do they play? 12, perhaps? That's why I haven't played down the training court. I don't want to give them access to a free energy each turn because they now now they need it now they need an energy every turn to retreat into a lunatic now they need an attachment every single turn i think i win now right yeah i win oh they decked themselves out yeah i win they needed back-to-back -back bosses orders um, because I was gonna go down to one price card, have enough attackers left, and whatever they KO'd, they weren't winning. So, all right, on to the next match. All right, so we, we're going first again um, with a much worse hand than last time, though. Um, I think we're gonna start with the Articuno, unfortunately. And we're gonna go Fog Crystal, and we're gonna see what else we can do, but this is definitely not the start you want to see with this deck all right i'm going to establish a calyrex because i already have the v max is down and we're going to pass nothing else to do here an energy would have been nice to at least threaten a, a ko next turn but hopefully now we're up against yeah a v star deck that's what we're hoping for all right So I imagine we're up against Palkia. So it's really unfortunate that we had such a slow and not so great start. And because it is Palkia, <laughs> um, just raw path to a peak on turn one. Uh, because it is Palkia, I'm gonna go ahead and Marnie because I wanna conserve this choice belt for a Mewtwo. Jeez, all right. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to go ahead and Marnie right here. That raw, they play one path to the peak and they just have it raw. Okay, well, we got our training court. So that's nice. Hopefully we don't have to deal with path to the peak anymore. And hopefully I get a Mewtwo off of this draw. That would be fantastic. Uh, that's a Mewtwo, I guess. <laughs> that is a Mewtwo, so we'll take it. All right. 
I do have access to two choice spells, so I could potentially uh, return KO on the Palkia next turn, which is pretty nice. And there we go. All right. I mean, best case scenario, my Artigo node doesn't even get attacked, right? But realistically, that's likely to happen. All right. So now we're in a decent spot. Now we are in a very decent spot. So U2 reminds us of Alcrimi, right? Except it's worth two prizes. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so no boss. Um, they might end up exhausting their ability to start attacking. They might not. Greninja and Pocket. They might choose to attack with Greninja then. Soften up the Mewtwo, soften up the Calyrex. Seems like a decent play. It will force me to bench another Mewtwo. So that's how many energies in the discard ball. Just one though. Alright. I mean, they did need the Palkia to pull this off, right? Whether they're attacking with Palkia or with Greninja. Okay, there's another instance. So if they're gonna attack with, if they're gonna commit to the Palkia, they absolutely need to scoop up net. And bench another Palkia, otherwise they have no response if I KO them. Okay. <laughs> How do they have three evolution incense in their hand raw? What? <laughs> oh my god. Now tell me they're gonna get double cross switcher and knock out my Mewtwo with a choice belt. <laughs> what on earth is happening here? Okay, Irida and Level Ball. Okay, that's fair. All right, so I, that was not the turn I was expecting from my opponent, but we're in a decent-ish spot still. Nice choice belt. Okay, as long as I don't over bench here, as long as this Mewtwo can survive the next hit from this Palkia, we're in a really good spot. <clears throat> okay. So... So I probably want to bench another Mewtwo, right? I have enough energy to where I shouldn't worry about that. So my biggest worry... Well, I have access to Quick Ball. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw with Underworld Door. I would love to keep this Quick Wolf for a boss next turn to take down that Palkia. I think that's what I'm gonna do, right? Definitely gonna attach here. Definitely gonna use this. I think I can bench the other Calyrex. So I discard two energy, knock out the Intellion, and by, if I bench this, that's 220, 200, plus the choice belt, 230. So I always survive the next hit. And then this is where my opponent might try to attack with Greninja, and then I go boss knock out the Palkia. That's the plan. And just gonna discard the energy from the bench if they go boss i have the air balloon and that means they're not using marnie if they go marnie then i have um enough energies on the active to where i can attack and i just need one to knock out the bottom so we're in a pretty good spot i would say the key element missing is a follow-up mewtwo which i didn't get to bench this turn um i definitely want to bench next turn because that quick ball will be dedicated to a Luminion. However, I will be using my abilities, um, my ability first, and any fog crystal 
any other quick ball, the actual Mewtwo, an Ultra Ball, all of that would get me the Mewtwo. Okay, my opponent's not going to go for the Greninja play though, so that's pretty okay by me. <clears throat> so my Mewtwo will have taken three prize cards, which is great. But I do need the follow-up Mewtwo. And I need to be careful with the energies. Alright, there's a Drizzle. We know they have an Irida in their hand, and they have that level ball. They haven't played the Irida yet, that's their supporter of choice. Seeing them try to boss style would be fantastic to me. I would absolutely love to see that. That turn one path to a peak though. I feel like, like, yes, that was, path to a peak does affect my deck, right? But it's better to save the path to a peak for, um, oh my, no, they can't. They just evolved. Um, it's better to save the path to a peak for when you can go For when you can go and combine it with Roxanne. Okay, so I need another Palkia here. Which, they can't scoop up net KO the Mewtwo this turn. They will be able to pink knock it out next turn, which is sad. And they do have the Quick Ball. Jeez, this person just has everything in their hand. That triple raw evolution incense is insane though. Like, that's so incredibly lucky, I can't even explain it. <laughs> if they, imagine if they had um, the Echoing Horn this turn. <laughs> um, okay, so <laughs> this is a pretty brutal turn from my opponent. They've had like handpicked everything. Jeez, okay. So I have knockout, right? Which is nice. <laughs> now he can't bench another Mewtwo though. Oh no, I can, I can. However, um, all they need is boss to KO it, right? Can they get the boss though? I mean, I have to play to that, right? There's nothing I can do about it. Um, I might counter my own stadium at this point. We'll see. Okay, so just discard the energy. I'm gonna get the Mewtwo because that's the most realistic way I can. Well, you know what? I could. No, Marty doesn't do anything here. What if I go boss? KO the Italian. No, that's stupid. I just need to bench an army to and hope. Pretty awful hand though. Pretty awful hand draw, etc. Alright, let's do this. And then I need to discard three energies anyways. So let's have this friend powered up. Um I'm gonna discard the stadium. I don't want my opponent to have access to an extra two cards which might get them the boss. And then we go Cyperge, one, two, and three. Take the KO. It's really sad though that I didn't get any supporters, any anything, right? Any follow-up. And the turns, the back-to-back -back turns that my opponent has had have been out of this world good. <laughs> Out of this world, good. All right. So no stadium for them to draw extra cards. Um, that obviously means um, scoop up net. So they have access to a drizzle, which probably means access to a boss. Yeah. Nothing I can do about that. Now they need either 
Palkia or the boss, and I can search for the other one with the Drizzle. That would be really odd if they don't have either. And they could have done like a Galaxy Brain play where I promote the Mewtwo, expecting them to only have Cross Switcher. Maybe they don't have boss and they only have Cross Switcher and they don't have enough cards to pull off the Cross Switcher. Those two extra cards that I prevented them from getting, I think it's pretty important. Okay, but that Irida, if they promoted the Intellion, well, maybe not, I don't know. Maybe they don't have the Scuba Man. And or any Cross Switcher piece. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so they're gonna go after the Mewtwo, knock me out, and then I have no response to that. Um... Well, I mean, okay, so my response to that will be ideally boss KO something, right? Yeah, so you go after the Mewtwo, which can one-shot the Palkia. Okay, so my response to this is boss KO something and then with triple Calyrex and try to build enough energies over the course of two turns to where I can then one-shot the Palkia. So I guess we're still in this, we're still in this. Wow, they had energy. They had plenty of energies, what the heck? Okay, they're down six energies though now. All right, well, let's promote you. <laughs> okay, so let's do this. So Mewtwo's obviously not good anymore I need boss and I ideally I need to not bench well they have the pump combo actually never mind if they have boss they win right oh they didn't use um, quick shooting Um, boo, 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 boo. yeah, I need boss and then they need uh, the other two cross switchers or boss itself. Right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I don't think I'm winning this. Had a little PTCGO hiccup there. <laughs> so I would rather draw the boss that way I can next turn um, use the minion okay there's the raw boss and we're gonna go on a roll door make sure we get a lot of energy into play attached to these friends and then so who do we boss KO though Knocking out either of these doesn't really help. If I knock out this, then that prevents the sniping of the pump kaboo, I guess. So I think that's the way to go. Um, if they have another Shade Dillon's Antillion, there's not much to do about that. The Greninja, though, is what can draw them extra cards. I think I'm gonna go after the Greninja. I think that's what makes the most sense. If they have double scoop up net, then so be it. Do they even have... Have they played any scoop up nets? No, they haven't. Oof. So that might end up being my demise. Alright, so I did 150 damage. With triple abilities, plus attachment for turn, plus choice belt, I can one-shot the Palkia, right? So if they have boss, they win. If they have cross switcher plus energy to retreat, they win. Okay, they attach to the bench, they're using level ball. So 
So we might just see a Roxanne here. Let's see if they can draw, draw the things. And that's preparation four. And yeah, that would have allowed them to draw extra cards with Greninja. So I think that was right. Um, could I have done something else? I guess I could have played down the training courts. Well, no, because that gave them the energy as well. If they don't evolve the Palkia, then I have the possibility to go boss KO on that. We'll see. We'll see what I get. The Roxanne's going to be pretty harsh here. <clears throat> if they have it. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Okay, I'm pretty sure they forgot that last turn. They would have won. If my Pongo had been damaged, I probably would have knocked out that dude. Roxanne? Yep. They just have everything every single turn. <laughs> It's impressive. It's impressive. I wish I drew like that with Palkia. Ah, oh, come on. They play a second one. Ah, oh, I have the next turn. Jeez. Unreal. Unreal. So taking away the stadium ended up being what costed me the game. So, I mean, it would have been hard to recover off of that, but I did have access to Crobat still. So getting a fresh hand of six and then my abilities, drawing extra cards, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have gotten rid of the stadium. Um, that's what ended up costing me the game. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching. Uh, Mewtwo feels like it's almost there. Right, with Calyrex, almost there, just not quite, right? Um, and like the way my opponent drew literally perfectly every single turn was just impressive versus my quick ball bench dude pass, right? So I definitely lost a big turn right there where a stronger start for myself probably would have been able to um, overwhelm my opponent at one point, but oh well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.